กรรมวิธีกิจสันตนีกัมพูชีหนึ่งปีพบโลกสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับสวัสดีครับ Uh, we are a training institution. We are specialized in uh, providing uh, training in uh, telecom, uh, networking, e-commerce. But we are also a research institution. We do research in uh, Khmer language processing, in rural ICT, and other related technology like uh, AI and big data, for example. Hmm. So okay. Basically, we do. Yeah. And what, uh, Subhip, just just for the audience, so uh, since this is your first time here, what's your personal background? How, oh, how do you get uh, here? I am a engineer, an IT engineer. Mm. I, then I have uh, my uh, PhD degree uh, mm. from France in mm. uh, in IT, in yes. science, yes. Uh, in signal processing, okay. uh, particularly. Uh, and then I have been working for more than uh, 12 years at mm. the Institute of Technology of Cambodia. So oh, I think no, yes, uh, yeah. as a, a teacher, yes, uh, yes, yeah, professor, professor. Yeah. And then uh, the last three year, I moved to uh, this new uh, school, a uh, national. Uh, Uh, Institute of Telecom, NIPT, uh, yes, yes. as a, a specialized school in, in IT, and now serve as the president of the. Oh, uh, awesome, 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 Eric. Yeah, thank you very much. I've been living in Cambodia for 10 years now, and the reason why I moved from Australia to Cambodia was to use my competencies, qualification, to serve the development of the country, and so especially competencies in technology and entrepreneurship. Because my primary background is in technology, and I have this in common with s o p i e Also, I was working uh, on research topics that relate to uh, speech processing and speech technologies and artificial intelligence. And one thing to led to another, and I developed new competencies. And I'm now working also at advisory support level to this government and a few other governments in the region. All right. Well, you know, I think. Uh The last time, Eric, we we sort of start a bit on the hard science, you know, hard technology. But today, I, I so Pierre, with, with with you around, I want to focus more on the the so-called transformation, how technology transform, rather technology as technology. And I think this is something where not many people uh, do do see that transformation coming from, right? You know, I mean, agriculture. Okay, I'm ag- agriculture. <laughs> Right, I'm in uh, medicine. Well, okay, I'm a doctor. But behind that, there's a whole technology, technological transformation that helped them to become a better agronomist, a better uh, whatever. Right. So anyway, uh, so maybe we focus on that transformation. Um, we, we we can start with just him. Uh, well, I think in the last uh, five years or so, we are living in a world that is. Uh, Changing very fast, and why changing that fast? Because because of digital technology. Mm-hmm. Uh, the term of digital transformation, because the digital technology have really uh, go in deep in different business mm-hmm. and transform the way business is doing. Uh, example in Cambodia, for mm, example. Yeah, please, talk please, about please. FinTech about yes, green yes, tech, yes, about yes, health tech, yes. but but uh, surely. Uh, Five or ten years ago, when I study in Phnom Penh and mm. my family in Sienuville, mm. uh, my mom used to send me money by taxi. You know, yes, yes. By bus. Yeah. To write her very nice letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mom, I miss you, and then she will send the money. Uh, send yeah. the money yeah. and to write the, uh, the bus station for some time. And if the money doesn't come, I will 
yeah. health problem because yes. I, I stay here alone. But now you know you have Ving, you have yes. the Smart Lui, you have yes. True Money, you have all these mobile uh, money technology that allow you to to do transaction business mm. to business. Mm. You don't need to uh, wait days and days mm. to have uh, mm. business transfer money already. Yes. Uh, you have PayPay that now mm. you can uh, so. So this is already transformed the way we, we do business, the, mm. the, the way that we uh, do transaction between business and business. Uh, Eric, last time he told me that he came here by Uber. <laughs> you know, yes. it's the last six months that Uber have joined Cambodia yes, yes. market. And yes. before, if you want a taxi, you call. Yes. You call a number, you wait for some time, the taxi call you back, you don't know where he is, yeah, yeah. how he look like. Yes. Now with Uber, you know exactly where he is. And Uber has come to Cambodia just six months now, mm. and he has more than 600 taxi now operating in Phnom Penh. So you know, how you can operate a bus company, a taxi company, mm. with that less period of time and mm. have that much taxi. So mm. because technology, because yeah. you disrupt the way that uh, you do business. So mm -hmm. in, diff in all the sector that mm. uh, business is operating, uh, technology will uh, penetrate it very deep and mm. if the business that don't impress this fast enough, mm. it, the business will not become competitive, will not reach mm. customers anymore. Mm. Mm. Uh, because now com customer is on digital platform, yes. uh, it's kind of thing. So in general, uh, if we, we, we want to, to wrap it up is that Inside a company, mm. inside a small or big, mm. technology will change the way the team collaborate together, mm. the production line, and the customer uh, mm. relations. Mm. You cannot just sit inside your design room as an engineer. Yes. In gem, in imagine the next product or design that you want to give your customers, mm. and plan. Say, okay, next next year I want to make like. 1,000 t-shirt mm. and I want it to look like this mm. and then you produce it in a factory or your supplier and then put in the market. Mm. It doesn't happen like this anymore if you want to impress all the technology. Mm. You will have made to have the feedback home with the customer by opening mm. up the design, mm. uh. to cross out the design, what your customer want, what kind of design they like, perhaps mm. also allow them to, to collaborate on design. Mm. Mm. Your customer can customize, can pre-order, yes. so you know exactly how many units you can uh, order from the factory. Yes, yes. And then you ship ship it for uh, directly from the factory. Mm. So business go faster. The connection with your customer is really deep and mm. really direct. Mm. You have uh, so it, it's so, so it, it's really multi-dimensional. It's not even uh, you know sort of like uh, linear. It's really multi-dimensional. Uh, Eric, uh, what, what, what's your what's your view on that? We, we quoted three important aspects, actually. Mm. Uh, recommendations to the customer, suggestions to the customer, smart suggestions to the customer. This can be automated, this is already automated. If, you, if I build up from this uh, Uber example, yeah. right? This is a typical example of an application that performs some automated matching, right? That finds the taxi that is the closest uh, from a geographical and topographic point of view, right? It's not just close from a geographical point of view, it's also close in terms of preference because mm. I can indicate that I want a taxi driver with four stars or five stars or with that kind of profile or that kind of car. So it's matching both at a level that is just special and preference. And now this notion of matching can be used and is already used in a number of applications, right? Again, suggesting matching customers with products. Mm. That's what happens uh, with Amazon, with eBay, with mm. Alibaba, even with iTunes and Apple that will suggest you know, the next music that will appeal to you mm. based on your history of, of consumption. So that's, you've got a whole area of business applications mm. behind just this concept of matching preferences. Uh, business matching, of course, mm. investment matching, and it can go as far as societal application between mm. people themselves who want mm. to find partners or relationships or friendships yes. and so forth. Sure. Airbnb is another yes, example. Yes. There was one concept, right? Planning was another concept. It, uh, uh, what do you mean by planning? Mm -hmm. Planning, resource uh, you, planning. You mean urban planning? Resource planning. Oh, resource planning, resource planning. okay. Planning. Uh, I mean, uh, business go further than that in, in, in driving by data and mm. business driven by data. Yes, yes. So all the decision yeah. can be met by by data, by yeah. indicators. Yeah. So we have a 
big data, like you know, uh, there is a famous uh, story nowadays that a bank in Japan mm. uh, have used computer to decide who can get a loan, mm. and it's more efficient with the f- then loan bad officer loan than a human loan officer mm. because wow. they utilize a big data. Mm. You have extensive history of who loan, who is a bad debt, who don't pay. Profiling, mm, profiling, yes. From which geographic background, yes, from which yes. society uh, profile, and what business they want to invest in, so they have extensive data on 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 on, on this uh, activity for yes. a very long time. So the mm. data, data is big enough mm. that a machine can analyze. Mm. And now you you have a new applicant mm. for a loan. Machine can analyze the profiles, learn from this, mm. and try to say yes or no. You get a loan. And it proved that in this case, with the algorithm that we use nowadays, mm. with the data that we have, mm. the machine can make a better decision than human being. Mm. It's now, uh, uh, Sophia. I mean, what what both of you describe is is uh, more like the the end user. So, for me, uh, calling an Uber, I don't need to know much, right? I mean, it's you. It's so user friendly. That's what I'm trying to say, right? Uh, but from from a let's speak from the uh, innovation perspective. From an entrepreneur, you, you know, you're dealing a lot with young entrepreneur, very uh, ambitious, very gung ho about you know not just in the commodity market. They have vision that in the ASEAN community, if a, a Thai company come to Cambodia, a Singapore company can come to Cambodia. Why not a Cambodian go to Myanmar, for example, right? This is where I think the 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 potential for Cambodia to also reach out beyond the Cambodian border. Well, with digital transformation, with digital technology, it exactly do that. That business don't have frontier anymore. Hmm. That with the idea that you have here and you start inside Cambodia, hmm. it can scale up quite rapidly to other countries. Hmm. Uh, this open up a new opportunity for our young people. Hmm. That uh, if you want to start a business today, yes. you need to embrace technology yes. in the Middle East because it will yes. allow you hmm. to uh, be one step ahead yes. and can be scaled quite yes. fast. We, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, I, I really want to uh, see this uh, this digital transformation from that entrepreneur perspective using technology all right and maybe uh, for simplicity you you can give a few good illustration of Cambodian uh, entrepreneur Pip, okay uh, you all mentioned about uh, the big company uber and everything but any you know Cambodian entrepreneur who have jumped into the digital transformation bandwagon? Well, um, at National Institute of Telecom, NIPTIC, we have uh, started the National ICT Award for the last few years now. This ah, year is our okay. third edition. It's mm. a national uh, award that uh, one to uh, recognize the best technology entrepreneurs, okay. young technology entrepreneurs. So, uh, you know, I'm quite uh, happy to see how the last three years, mm. the number of applicants mm. that come to our competition mm. have uh, doubled in number. Mm. In 2015, mm. when we start to create this competition, it's a new start, and we try to call different companies that have a product, a digital yes. product in the market yes. to join. Yes. At that time, we have 15 companies yes. that applied. And, uh, the price is $5,000. Yes, so. yes. Yeah. Uh, the winner is a uh, the winner is actually at a ministry ministry of uh, commerce oh you're kidding that uh, have digitalized the way people register for business ah okay so okay the uh, second edition we have 32 applicants okay so double double, double. In number yeah. double in number yeah and the winner is a young entrepreneur mm. 20, 20, 27 year old mm. he start a company called Book Me Bus. Ah, Book Me Bus, yeah. So, you know, I heard about it. Bus business, you can mm. buy ticket everywhere, but now you can buy online. Mm. And the guy go very deep because they can convince, he can convince the bus company to utilize his 
company software called Bus Management System. Mm. So Bus Company use their system to manage their bus seat. Mm. So with the application of Book Me Bus, you can compare all the bus uh, timetable price, mm. but also choose your seat because mm. the seat is real time. Uh huh. You can buy it immediately from your smartphone. You don't need to go to the bus company mm. anymore. You can pay by me. You can pay by different uh, transactions. Mm. This was last year. Mm. This year, that same company, one only one year old, they have more than 100 outlets in Cambodia now. They wow. partner with Ving. Mm. So now with a Ving agency, you can buy a, a, a bus ticket. Yes, so yes. this is an example how a startup mm. that start last year mm. with only two, three people, yes. but using technology, yeah, yeah. solve a problem, a real mm. problem mm. that you have different bus company, the price real situation, you don't know where to start, you don't know where to end, if you mm. sit uh, available or not, you need to go to multiple bus company to have your yes. you seat. Now you have the, his solely problem, very, mm. very real mm. world problem mm. with a technology, mm. with a very entrepreneurial uh, spirit, mm. partner with different partner. And now they have like more than 20 people in the company and mm. they are selling more than 100,000 worth of bus ticket in mm. one year. In wow. one year. So wow. the growth is exponential. Mm. Mm. So this is really example of how a, a joint entrepreneur can. Mm. Can, can use technology and solve a real problem and make it into a business and go quite fast. Mm. Very good. Eric, any other anecdote like there that? There are two examples I can think of. One is ICT and technology for agriculture. Mm. Ah, okay. Which I it's very, very, very important because Cambodia is pre still predominantly an agricultural in agricultural society. Yeah? Right. It's also a startup that began operating a couple of years ago, right, and that uh, analyzed the um, landscape, mm. right, the business environment, um, and that uh, actually observed that the, the, the difficulty to connect farmers mm. with markets, which is difficulty for uh, smaller farmers here to access markets, right, and to upgrade their own um, techniques mm. and technology. So what they did is that they used this um, contract tool, ju mm. judicial tool called the contract farming, you know, uh, just as a basis to sign contracts with a number of farmers, now 150 plus, right? And provide them with technology, provide them with all they need, provide them with finance, mm. provide them with a guarantee to actually buy their product with a, at a fixed price at the end of the season, so which means provide them with security, safety. Mm. And then they brought technology in the, in the picture in terms of soil analysis, in terms of water analysis, they also position in a value-added market that is uh, natural products, chemi chemical-free products. Mm. So the name of the project is called Project Alba, mm. the name of the startup. And they also brought technology in the picture in terms of trend analysis, analyzing the productivity trend mm. of the farmer and, ex and, and the exploitation. And then trend analysis of the market itself, mm. just to detect the best moment and the best places for, for selling. So they are, the, they are now at that point of um, automating these decision-making uh, processes and they have, one more, they have one more thing in place, which is recommendations to the mm. farmer mm. in terms of seeds, in terms of techniques and so forth. So they're automating mm. these recommendations which uh, is a bit similar to what I was mentioning before in terms of suggestions and recommendations. Right? Mm. So, all, so they're making use of a number of statistical techniques, applied mathematic techniques and so forth for the purpose of productivity enhancements. And, and now in terms of results, well, um, these 150 farmers have doubled their income. Mm. And they are planning to grow from 150 to possibly 1,000 in the next few years and to scale up their model. So that's one first example of an entrepreneurial project that can benefit the uh, rural development, the agricultural development here in Cambodia hmm. based on just an, a good entrepreneurial idea. That's the first example. So, so, so it, yeah, go ahead. May, go ahead. May, I, may I just basically this kind of startup use technology? Yes in terms of data so they because they have a lot of farmer in the area mm. a lot of data in terms of demand mm. so they can also do the matching mm. and predict the, the requirement yes, in yes. the market uh, 
we have talked about the soil analysis and the trend of the disease. So with the data, a big a big amount of data. Let's say if a lot of farmer is mm. uh, do this kind of contracting or consultation work, yeah. the company at the end of the day have a true database mm. of what area you can grow what when. Mm. Mm. And this intel mm. can be very, very... Like, so you saw a data mine. A data exactly. mining. So yeah. that, that's why now the, the, the business is running not on network anymore, not on money anymore, but mm. on data. Mm. If you have, imagine this company have very large data of in Cambodia, mm. what you can grow, mm. when, where, mm. how, when you can uh, sell it. Yes. It is very, very valuable that they, if they sell only that data, they mm. make a lot of uh, mm. benefit already and mm. help a lot of people. Wow. Actually, we, we already talked about data-driven agriculture. Mm. That's a worldwide trend. Mm. And one example of it is the use of drone, uh, agricultural yes. drones. Yes. It's all over the world now. I mean, all over the world. I, I went to China, my God, I mean, and they, they, they put on the front page they have kids. I mean, I look at the picture, these are kids. Eh? It was like, it remind me of my son or something playing game, you know, with this console there. But when I read the article, it's mind boggling. They are hiring and training these kids there now to actually work. Well, I mean, uh, controlling drone, right? Agriculture exactly. and everything. And they make money. Exactly. Yeah. It's cost effective. The right. drone can do a lot of things yes. while flying. Yeah? Yes. Uh, the topography of the farm, yes. uh, different sensor can detect disease, can detect uh, humidity on the land, temperature on the land. And with this, with this topography, hmm. the owner can plan uh, different things. Hmm. Can uh, plan how the uh, water ring system irrigation should yeah, yeah. work, uh, where, when hmm. uh, the disease should uh, could attack uh, different part of the planet, yes, yes. Plan. and with the with the time, and then you can do temporal analysis, mm. which means that the drone will actually produce imagery over time, mm. every month, every third month, and so forth. So you can compare the evolution over time, time right? and you, again you can bring other types of technologies and algorithms for uh, data and then analysis, over time they exactly. can do multiple cropping, for example, exactly, and, and increase it's, productivity. But it's not. This example is not is not outside. It's in Cambodia, in Kampot. Ah, okay. You know, you have a lot of you know, over peppers. It's yes, yes, yes. In, yes. Uh, in European market, yes. it's very valuable now, and they're doing this now. Yeah. In a lot of how how, how did they do that? They do drone mm. flying to to do the the uh, mapping. The mapping. They have sensor because you know a peppers planting is very sensitive. You know, with the uh, temperature, with the uh, humidity. Really. So they have some sensor on the on the ground. Yeah. To to detect the temperature and the mm. The water, the, the, the humidity of yes, the land. Yes. And mapping with the uh, Vera forecast, yes. when to to send the water. <laughs> wow. So it's very efficient. Yes. Uh, you save water, you save energy. Yes, yes. And you save money at, yes. at, at, at the end of the day. And of course, uh, more productive. Mm. More mm. productive. Well, you know, I, I think by now we have a very good. Uh, understanding on the practical transformation of uh, the digital world into a daily life, right? Uh, l let me shift a bit, uh, the focus a bit more uh, from, uh, from the application itself to the how to get there, right? Because Cambodia is a, has a very young population and this probably are our uh, uh, yeah, yeah. advantage, our asset. Uh, and they're very easy to grab, uh, to grow. In your institute, how what is your vision, you know, uh, in terms of building a core of young software engineer, you know, IT engineer, that sort of thing that can respond to the need of our economy? I, I think you, you get it right that in order to move forward to this digital Cambodia, yes. we need people. Yeah. People with, uh, with skills, mm -hmm. with digital skills, yes. software engineers. Yes. But uh, data science because mm. we will build, deal a, a with a lot of data we will need people that uh, like Rick he have an expertise mm. in AI yes, uh, artificial yes. intelligence yes. so how when you have big data mm. how you can utilize that data to finally mining the intelligence mm. from yes. that data if you have data and you cannot mine it to, yes. to be an actionable intelligence that yes. your company can decide yes. to do yes. something Yes. Just left, yeah. That's it. So these expertise are very important in mm. the next few years to come mm. because mm. it's going very fast. Yes, yes. 
in Cambodia, I perhaps can talk uh, under the uh, head of uh, Ministry of Post and Telecoms. Mm. Yes, yes. We have different initiatives. Yes. Why, why don't, uh, because they signal me that we need a break. So we'll take a short break and then uh, when you come back, you can oh, okay. go all the way. Go on uh, with, with the, the, the... So first of all, we need more young people to study technology, especially IT and digital technology. So people that can uh, build software, people that can build infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You know, in order to go to a digital society, you need digital infrastructure. You mm -hmm. need a fast network of 5G, mm -hmm. of fast internet broadband, mm -hmm. everywhere. And good news is that we are really good in this uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, development now. We have a submarine uh, network. Cable, yeah. yeah. Two fiber submarine, optic, yeah. Uh, uh, cap, uh, optical fiber is yeah, already yeah. Uh, installed in Cambodia. The 4G, we are among the first country in yes. the region that have 4G coverage. Uh, 5G is coming quite yes. soon. Uh, so these skills are very important. But most importantly, entrepreneurial spirit, spirit yes. for young people. Because we cannot just uh, tell our student, study hard, be a in good engineer yes. and then go to work. Mm. It doesn't uh, happen this way uh, anymore now. We mm. need to tell our young people, be creative, mm. uh, learn technology, mm. and try to be creative and start a technology, a very creative business, mm. that disrupt business. Mm. <laughs> That's really yes. thinking of new way out yes. to, to solve the same problem, mm. but better, faster with technology. Mm. And so cheaper, and cheaper. Applying. So yes. we need to attract more students. Mm. Secondly, at the ministry, we have established a funding mm. called Capacity Building and Research Funding. Yes. So it is a contribution from a uh, telecom industry, 1% mm. of their living, uh, gross revenue, mm. annual gross revenue. So it's estimated to be around 8 to 10 million every year. Yeah, yeah. We're going to use that funding to support three different initiatives. Mm. The first initiative is on enhance uh, the quality of our technology training. Yes, yes. So support different state university to update their labs, to update their uh, capability curriculum, mm. attract more students mm. by providing more, new, more scholarship uh, to study technology, for example. The second framework will be on initiate initiate the research activity because mm. it's very important that yeah. we can. Uh, initiate research on different aspects like big data, mm. uh, AI, human interface that perhaps can uh, tell yeah, yeah. Uh, how we can mm. have in a more natural uh, interaction with machine. Yeah. And the third framework will be on how to support startup, yeah. young okay. entrepreneurs, yeah, incubator, that, uh, incubator, a yeah. startup ecosystem. Yes, yes. So this is the three framework that the ministry are working mm. on now: mm. uh, enhance quality of training, mm. technology. Uh, initiate research activity in different university and uh, help to build ecosystem. Eric, human interface? Yeah, it was an interesting word that was just uh, pronounced as in creativity, right? When mm. it comes to entrepreneurship, the only limitation, the only frontier is imagination mm. and creativity. And mm. just, just to uh, echo with uh, Sophie's comment, there is a, you know, that's where the efforts should be channeled in terms of education our youth, uh, just to open up their creativity because the Technologies are there, the tools are there. Just a brief comment about natural language hmm. processing because it's, it's happening here now. Yeah. What, what, what is natural language processing? The ability for a machine to understand what you're saying, the meaning of it when you speak in Khmer. Hey, oh, okay. It's like Siri. It, it, it's kind of. Yeah. Kind of Siri in Khmer. Okay. okay. So, Khmer Siri. Yeah. That's right. Khmer and that, that's happening already. There are already a couple of applications and research projects. I'm aware of uh, research projects which have sort of facilitated in terms of its beginning between uh, ITC, which we quoted, and a uh, computer lab, and a private sector um, organization that, that is a job advertisement online mm. service, right? And, and then a, a founder that is a, an Australian founder. Um, and what that is about is to come up with an application for job seekers. Job seekers with um, no great ICT literacy, mm. right? Who are not so good at uh, drafting a CV, not so good at using search engines, but they can just, they will be able to address and use that application to uh, explain about their competence, their qualifications in natural language, in queer language. Now, that is very important at the moment in this economy because of 
the evolution of its structure. We know mm. that the structure of the Cambodian economy is currently evolving at a fast pace because mm. of the rapid growth. Yes. Now you need you need that to be fluid. You you need the job market to be more agile, mm. and that is where technology can, such as natural language processing, can help. There, there are a few examples, right? Uh, another example is the one you, you, you mentioned about just uh, text synthesis or, mm. or uh, synthesizing the um, semantic mm. of the text as in understanding and creating a summary of what was said. So, uh, Pip, I mean, what you say is great, good vision, good planning and thing, but we're dealing with human beings, right? You, yeah, and you're dealing with a lot of competition from uh, a, a marketplace where uh, people are marketing, school are marketing, come to my school, your school here. I mean, and they, they, they offer a lot of soft skill, which, which is fine. But I, I think how many economists uh, can Cambodia hide, right? How many, uh, I would say, uh, accountants can Cambodia hide? All these soft skill. Now, I, they, people, the market start to feel, wait a minute, you know. I mean, I cannot get a job with, with a degree in soft skills. But how do you go about, you know, more aggressively promoting that uh, science, technology, you know, IT is a future also. I'm not, it's not, I'm not saying it's going to replace everything, but it is a, uh, a, a field that you can grow and thrive and prosper and make money, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think the, 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 the point in Cambodia is that if you look in the higher education hmm. uh, today, uh, a lot of students choose to study, uh, I would say, conventional skill that their parents know. Yes. Because a lot of, like me, I will ask my parents what to study, right? Mm. And uh, my parents perhaps know only the uh, conventional uh, job. Yeah. Doctor, yeah. A yeah. manager, yeah. a lawyer. You're a lawyer, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I finally convinced my daughter to study law. So, so but th perhaps they don't know about uh, Computer networking, computer yeah. software engineering, uh, data science. It, it, it didn't it? exist during those exist. days. So how can, uh, as a university, convince them mm. to study technology if their parents don't even uh, mm -hmm. know the what the job is? Yeah, so yeah. a lot of effort need to go in orientation, mm. in job uh, orientation. Yeah. The market is huge, I mean, agree. We yeah. need, uh, in any company, government, mm. Even government yeah. need a lot of people that with the technology skills, yes, yes. IT skill. So, but if you you look at today, perhaps less than ten percent of mm. our students study mm. technology and IT. Yes, yes, yes. And it is mm. not ready to to move. So we need to do it uh, quick because mm. you know uh, disruption happened. Yes. Right? we need those yes. people. And as you mentioned that. We, our, our advantage, our asset is that we have a lot of young people. Yes. And other Asian countries also need a lot of expertise mm. in IT. Yes. If we have our young people study technology, they, 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 they can they go can, and work go and do that's business right. so in the region. Th that's why, you know, uh, I think the Ministry of Education in the last three years have already done a great job with mm. different, uh, different even different uh, uh, science technology festival, yes. Uh, different scholarship to to study technology. Mm. Uh, the only three school that opened the last three year mm. that uh, allowed by Ministry of Education, yes, is, uh, the uh, Technology Institute of Kampung Spur, yes, yes, technology institute, yes, yes. Uh, Bung Kmum, yes. It's another technology institute and Nipti, yes, yes. yes. So ah. the three only awesome. Awesome. Uh, public institution that allowed to be open in mm. the last few years is mm. technology. So I think it already is assigned that it, it, it's a good vision, a good vision yeah. that we need to attract more students to start technology. We need more place, mm. more university mm. to allow students to study mm. technology because it's our future, it's our competitive. Uh, just to build up on that, uh, what Sophie said, which I find very interesting, is that there's a great deal of the youth now which in 10 or 20 years will do jobs that do not exist today. Yeah. And they need to be trained now to prepare for that. Mm. When I say a great deal, it could be 20%, could be 50%, could be more. Yes, yes. Right? So, yes. and that uh, shows that they need to acquire skills that should be combined in terms of technology and entrepreneurship mm. together. Mm. Right? So that they can detect the opportunity, right? 
the, the, the nature of, of work itself and mm. how it is distributed, how it is allocated is already changing and will change a lot, mm. right? It's uh, the, the shift's work or just the normal 40 hours a week is yeah. going to be one model out of many others, yes, yes. right? Uh, we talk now about micro work, right? Mm. Which can be distributed, which can be performed at home out of a tablet, out of a smartphone in the most rural and remote areas as a complement of income. Now, this ability to uh, reshape mm. work itself is going to create entrepreneurial entrepreneur opportunities, is going to, to reshape the Cambodian economy, mm. Mm. right? And that's where we need yeah. to prepare the youth for. Yeah. We, we, we're running out of time and I'm going to give you, uh, you know, two minutes each uh, in terms of last message. What do you want this young kid? you know, uh, to do, to someday become a good engineer, an uh, IT engineer, whatever. Okay, uh, I think we are living on a world that gonna be transformed quite fast and it will transform by technology. So in order to do that, can ask Cambodia we need to be ready for that. If not, I think in terms of competitive competitivity, mm. we will be uh, less competitive compared to other uh, nation. Uh, the good news is that everybody is in the same starting point. Mm. No one know what gonna be the okay. job. No one what is know what what is the next job is gonna mm. look like. Mm. So it's completely disruptive. Okay. So it's a chance for us that we can now again jump in and start something new. So to our young people, uh, you have consider study, discover the job, discover the the, the skill and. Mm have more interest in technology because it's where the job will be. Mm -hmm. At Niptic, we uh, provide this. We provide technology training but also entrepreneurial training mm -hmm. uh, to our students to make sure that our students have all the asset to yes. succeed in their uh, career. Awesome. Eric? Yes, to the young people I would say keep an open mind, right? Be curious and also put yourself on an ever learning pathway. Never stop. Engage with your fellow young people in Cambodia, in the region, in ASEAN, in the world. Use technology, use smartphone for that. Uh, think in terms of knowledge management, how you can create more knowledge out of existing knowledge. And keep abreast of support opportunities from this government, from the region, from, from uh, international organizations in general, to support entrepreneurial projects. That's my key word. Well, Paul, thank you so much for taking the time to share this transformation uh, world that uh, not many people can... Uh, uh, we see, but we, we, we don't know what's happened behind, behind, right? the, scene. behind the scenes. And uh, what you have, both of you have described just uh, for the last 45 minutes is really an eye-opener to many people. And I hope it will, it will help them change a bit how they, they view technology, they view business. hard science, everything, you know, how they can use this, all these things to help transform their life, their business, uh, and hopefully our economy, you know. So once again, thank you so much. Thank you. So right. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.